Hi guys, so we start this little video with going over some of the cars here uh, that was kindly delivered by Dan and Ellie uh, just about a month ago. And I asked you guys down in the comment section to select which one you want to see restored. And the one with the most likes, well, this is it. Uh, Mike Espo, um, who has his own diecast channel, check him out if you haven't already, uh, suggested that we customise this Land Rover into the Queen's Land Rover. And uh, yeah, had the most likes, and I thought that was quite a cool idea anyway. Uh, so here it is. Welcome to Matchbox Garage. I'm Rob, and today we're going to attempt to turn this uh, police Land Rover into the Queen's car. Um, I've done a little bit of kind of Googling and uh, seemingly she does love an old Land Rover. She still drives on her uh, private land and uh, she seems to kind of always go for a, a very dark green Land Rover, uh, Defender, this kind of size, like the, they call this one the 109, but uh, perhaps she's had some different ones over the years. This is an earlier one. Uh, so some of the things that we need to change here is of course, removing the uh, stickers on the side, changing the colour and taking off. The biggest job probably was removing that uh, police sign uh, on the top. So uh, yeah, it rolls very well, there you go. Nice little new angle uh, that I popped in there. Let me know if it works for you. But yeah, this is the car. As you can see, the uh, police sign on the top there it is solid. It's not like a nice little plastic one that pops off with a, you know, revealing a hole. Um, it is cast within this, so yeah, a little bit of a surgery required. But uh, indeed, reading underneath, Corgi Land Rover, the 109 WB. Uh, looked like it had already been uh, taken apart in the past. Tiny little bit loose. You can kind of see from the bumper there, perhaps uh, where it maybe be been removed in the past with a screwdriver. I do end up uh, straightening that out, but as you can see, quite forceful, but uh, with a flick of the screwdriver there, the base just comes off without any further work required, and it certainly popped back on like a dream. Uh, some old carpet there on both axles. And I think, uh, you know, this is a, a brand new desk that I have built and created for myself. Maybe because I'm leaning on it a little bit. But uh, yeah, certainly just falls off at the front. Just a, maybe a degree or two. So need to be careful with the wheels. Otherwise I'll end up trying to find them on the floor. But there we are. Little uh, suspension piece here. We'll put that to, to one side. And the interior uh, looking on Google and looking at various pictures it appeared that the Queen had a green interior with a green exterior um, to some perhaps a little too much green but I think it really works uh, popping out the steering wheel there we'll put that to one side and we'll leave that in the uh, black original condition and uh, most notably with the Queen a thumbs up from me she does drive a manual transmission stick shift no automatic uh, for the Queen I think that just that alone uh, I just think that is so cool but yeah a couple of bits we'll put to one side they don't need uh, any work the uh, suspension is uh, hidden away uh, the windscreen, thankfully, no cracks, no scratches, no deep gouges. Uh, it just needs a, a very light polish with a cloth. The wheels here, again, looking at the Google images. I mean, she's had a few different ones over the years, so I took it. You know, kind of took my, my own, uh, I guess, stance ultimately, but uh, they appear to be, there you go. That makes it almost look like it's at a 45 degree angle. I promise you it's not. But um, <laughs> still playing around there, look. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would say uh, her wheels are or were on the one that I was looking at black. And they look good. 
Kind of like a, a no frills Land Rover. The door here just rests in place and unsurprising these uh, get lost uh, so very happy and lucky that this was still in situ for this uh, customization today of course we've got the little hole on a bonnet We'll have to fill that in because the uh, the queen didn't have, or not, nor did I see any kind of uh, um, spare wheel on the bonnet. Uh, noticing some of the kind of little bits on the on the roof there. I did have a look at the. I was, uh, my intention initially was to kind of smooth over the roof, but. I noticed with the uh, Queen's car, she certainly had the kind of, I guess, well, they, they're not stripes, but three, I wouldn't even know what you would call it, over the, you know, over the top there. But she certainly didn't have uh, this police sign. And it took a while, and I didn't want to bore everybody by showing you, but ultimately I just drilled down with the uh, little uh, disc there, a couple of millimetres at a time, and then with my pliers, just give it a little wiggle and pull it off. And uh, after a bit of a, a further sanding there, uh, you can see we've got a little bit now to fill in. And it's, I must admit, it's not perfect. It's not 100%. It's 83%, I would say, uh, the final result. I went with some uh, JB Weld, but then I had to file that down and then I needed to kind of fill it in again and I filled it in with some uh, plastic putty and then I needed to file that down and then eventually I thought I'm gonna be here forever so I took the 83% and uh, was hoping the paint would uh, perhaps do the remainder for me and it's not too bad to be fair I don't think you can really see it in the final product so that's good enough for us I hope you'll agree but anyway, the foot-long hot dog jar returns. Just moving it out there so I can get just the last little bit of boiling water there before coming in with two tablespoons of caustic soda. A little bit naughty of myself, I didn't wear a glove, and I should have done. Uh, you may have seen a little splash over the top there, and it did hit my hand. Um, thankfully, it was totally fine, um, but it might not have been. It may have burnt me, so uh, yeah, that was a, a little reminder that I got away with that time to uh, make sure to wear my glove. Now at this point, it's probably 15 minutes later. The water is actually still very hot to the touch, but as you can see, the paint is uh, really starting to come off. I think it's all off. That is the underside of that uh, base so they all the paint is off of there but the body there i think it's hanging on in a few little places perhaps uh, another five or ten minutes and we would have had a hundred percent unfortunately we didn't get a hundred percent i mean it was close it was probably 90 92.4 percent but i do prefer a hundred percent the uh the base there Now, well, it was about a 7.9% uh, paint removal on the actual door. Uh, I did put that into a, a separate little pot of uh, paint remover and uh, 
polish that up uh, off screen as you can see here a little bit of paint remaining uh, it was after this point that I of course uh, started to tackle the uh, roof section and uh, eventually uh, the following day after the uh, putty and so on as you can see at the top there did dry I am hitting it up now with the pound shop uh, primer you know I was put off for years and uh, of course our friend Brian Artillery he said Rob just go for it you know what is the worst that can happen and I am certainly a convert I shan't be paying 10 15 pounds for primers that are smaller than this pound shop can and this pound shop can does as does as well it does as well and there you are that's the first coat I did do uh, two coats there was a little bit of a pitting on this uh, casting so I thought the second coat may help to fill in any minor imperfection and it did uh, this is the interior now it did have a, uh, a black primer on its own just using up actually the uh, the Biejo uh, primer that I do have wonderful primer it's just so expensive now and uh, yeah a couple of coats of this green to uh, mimic like a, a green leather interior for the exterior I felt that enamel was suitable for not only uh, this old Land Rover but for the Queen I don't know I don't, uh, acrylic just didn't feel right it needed to be enamel and uh, yeah mixed up this uh, color ultimately you know a nice kind of uh, British racing green stroke Land Rover green and in my little move I managed to spill all of my enamel thinners and again it's an expensive little pot that and what I do have again from the pound shop is simply a great big bottle of white spirit and I thought again what's the worst that can happen it it is a paint thinner in its own right and that's what I used instead and I'll tell you what perhaps need less of it now I went with a 50-50 you know one to one ratio here and it is uh, it's going on but it's very thin which is fine you know just needed more layers that's all uh, perhaps I'll try a, a two to one ratio next time and I think it will lay on a little thicker but hey it done as good a job as the expensive stuff so I think I'll uh, continue using this also going forward but again it's another day later uh, I mentioned in the previous video which was a second unboxing that this video was supposed to have come out last night but as I was uh, handling the casting to put it together still a little tacky um, so I left it another 24 hours to really uh, dry up that's the only disadvantage with uh, enamel it just takes a little longer to uh, dry compared to the acrylic but as you can see the uh, bits and pieces here the uh, green interior of course I painted the wheels black with the uh, chrome axle lens and then polished up the window section the uh, steering wheel back in position there I used a, a black metallic to paint the base uh, this was uh, from a can courtesy of our friend Tony Bellini and then uh, using kind of Danny's method what I consider Danny's method a little bit of a uh, dry brushing to kind of uh, with some silver paint to bring out the uh, bits and pieces on the uh, underside there and then of course the main casting there and I'll uh, add a few little extra details uh, for the final reveal but as a reminder of what she looked like and this is the result so first things first this is the right color to me this is the right color for any Land Rover lovely clear window section there the wheels in black with you know I could have gone with a black on the axle ends but it is a, a die cast casting after all and I just felt that needed a little little something 
a little bit of color in the rear indicators there and the brake lights coming around the front um, you'll see my uh, attempt at the registration uh, leaves a it kind of confirms to me that I need a lot more work on doing this I think I got a little bit better as I went along the registration actually reads or should read a 444 RYV and of course some uh, color there in the uh, lights and the grill but anyway thanks so very much for my patrons uh, past and present again uh, of course another big thanks to Dan and Ellie for uh, all of these cars that we got to choose this uh, from and of course Mike Casbo again uh, for well, suggesting this and you guys for liking that comment hope you all liked it please do uh, like comment and I shall see you soon on the next one Cheers, guys.